Welcome to Mountain Women Radio with your host, Tammy Trayer. Tammy is an author, writer, and integrative health practitioner dedicated to helping her listeners enjoy life and family. Listen as she shares her extensive knowledge on homesteading, off-grid living, wilderness survival, and living a faithful, simple life. Find a comfortable seat, grab your favorite beverage, and prepare to be encouraged. Welcome to Mountain Woman Radio. I'm your host, Tammy Trier, and today is episode number 264. And we're just going to talk about um, enjoying the good summer bounty and the season. You can hear all the birds chirping. Unfortunately, you guys missed the sunrise with me. I was recording the Faith Led Healing podcast while the sun was rising, which was quite amazing. Uh, we had rain last night, so there's, a, there's still a fog over the over the ground, and the sun was rising through that. The day's coming alive. The birds are chirping. There's a small nest of house finches up here on the porch that actually hatched last week. Their eyes opened on like Sunday or Monday, and Tuesday they took flight, and now they're creating their own nests amazing to watch. God's creation is just amazing. How people can deny that there is a God is beyond me. Because when you sit and you pay attention to your surroundings, it's quite amazing to see how God is moving around you. I hope you guys are seeing that. I hope you guys are hearing that. So I just wanted to share with you guys, you know, um, take advantage of this season. So often, many people are rushing through life and just going to the grocery store and getting their, their produce and their, their meats. But this is a season where there's lots of farm stands, depending where you are across the United States or across the world. And there's farms, there's farmer's markets, there's flea markets where people are bringing their homegrown goodness. And of course, it's super important to be Um, enjoying organic and non-GMO produce as much as you possibly can. You can also find my toxin guide by going to faithledhealing.com slash toxin guide where you will find the uh, clean 15 and the dirty dozen shared in there with which will share with you the produce that you don't have to worry about quite as much as far as if it was organically grown, that you can soak it in um, vinegar and water and get off the pesticides and things and clean it well. Then there's others like strawberries and your berries that are soft skinned and uh, whatever's been sprayed on them is impossible to remove and that you wanna definitely focus on getting organic. It's a good it's a good list to be aware of but there's so many good meals you can make in the summer months a lot of people struggle you know with with cooking and baking it's not their thing so I just wanted to speak into that a little bit today you know um, on the channel at faith led living previously Treyer wilderness you will find a lot of my videos on cooking and baking with an all-American sun oven or the like. I had and have multiple sun ovens that I utilize and um, I don't have them with me in this setting. So I've been using a slow cooker and that has been joyous. I haven't used one of them in quite a long time, but the same happens in my sun ovens. You can easily throw a meal together with a roast, potatoes, carrots, celery, onions, and let it slow cook all day. Low and slow is the ticket with your meats and your vegetables. And you will have an amazing meal waiting for you. You don't have to do all the meal prep. You don't have to do all, all, you know, drive home from your job or a day with the kids all day and have to throw a meal together. Utilizing such things can make your life so much easier. Instapots, 
any of you have Instapots. I feel a little uneducated and out of the loop because of being off grid. I don't use all those things. I do very simple, um, simple gal. And, but I like to cook and bake. And uh, I have a couple videos coming your way of some things that I've been doing that I thought I would share because I'm also not a recipe gal anymore. I used to, I, you know, that was the only way I, I knew how to cook anything uh, oftentimes in the beginning, um, especially your, your baked goods and things. Um, but I've grown past recipes and just concoct and make my own, or I use a recipe and adjust it. Um, I'm very good at that as well. So in sharing all that, you know, there's simple meals that we can make and um, some of the things that might be the hurdles for people getting past um, using recipes is um, seasonings. Seasonings can be a struggle in that a lot of times when you're, let's just say fresh out of the gates and you're learning how to make meals for your family, um, we tend to over season because we don't know. So. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize or think about is taste testing. You can taste test your food as you're making it to see if it is seasoned well enough. Um, but the other thing is to season it lightly until you learn how much is enough for yourself and your family and they can season it more at the table. Seasoning tends to be um, a struggle. Um, making sure that you have enough fluid in your um, slow cooker, more so than the sun oven. Um, but covering your, your meal with, with liquid so that if you're making a stew or a roast that there's plenty of liquid in there. But you can throw things together very quickly. And the sun ovens are amazing. Utilizing a free resource, not requiring power, we thrive on our sun ovens. You can also cook and bake in your grill. I have videos on the channel as well on um, cooking and baking in a grill because when we embarked on our off-grid journey, we lived in a canvas wall tent for eight and a half months and the only thing I had to at the time to cook and bake was a grill. So it's very easy to create a convection oven with a grill by simply getting some big softball sized rocks or baseball sized rocks and putting them in your grill and setting your container, your baking dishes on top of the rocks so that the heat can go around. Simple, easy, and then just learning and the timing of things, you know, because the grill has gaps and there's air leaks and things, um, it may not be as efficient. It won't be as efficient as your oven and your kitchen, but it's a great way to cook and teach your kids to cook. Teaching your children how to cook and make meals is extremely important and not just the girls. My guy was the mountain boy. He was in the kitchen all the time learning how to make cookies and breads and, and cakes and, and meals. And then he went off to college and he was on it, you know, he was on his own. He took my cookbook with him and off he went. Speaking of my cookbook, if you need recipes, I do have the Treyer Wilderness um, cookbook out there that you can find by going to faithledliving.com slash Tammy Treyer or faithledhealing.com slash Tammy Treyer. That will take you to my books. That book was uh, my catalyst to self-publishing. That was my... Um, trial and error book to just get the hang of self-publishing and it was also a means of getting all of our family favorite recipes into a book so that the mountain boy had them so there was intention behind that but those there's meals in there and um, your condiments your your baked goods your breads and each recipe has a conversion to gluten-free because the mountain boy needed to be on a gluten-free diet for much of his life uh, he's no longer, and um, that really nurtured and helped him. So if you are in need of learning how to do gluten-free, um, being able to cook both sides of things for the longest time, I had to cook both regular and gluten-free um, to keep everybody happy, and then I perfected gluten-free to the point that you couldn't tell the difference. So it's possible. 
So if you need a cookbook, that is out there for you. And, um, you know, teaching our kids is really important. It's a skill that is really beneficial so that when we do leave home, we have that already under our belt so often. Like for me, I avoided the kitchen at all costs because it was a very high conflict area and um, I just couldn't handle it. And I wish that I could and, and would have been able to, but it just, it was too much. And it was a place where, you know, um, not such nice things always happen. So I avoided that and I didn't learn those things and I, and I wish I would have had the opportunity to. However, um, learning on my own set me up for being able to create my own processes and things as well. Um, just a little tip to make things easy in the kitchen. Something I really enjoyed doing for myself was progressively cleaning up as I was going through the process because then at the end I didn't have as much cleanup. So if you spill something or when you're doing the flour and you're mixing and it puffs and your counter's full of flour, you know, I would just wipe things as I was going so that I, so that I didn't have this major mess at the end. That always helped me greatly. Um, being able to, here's something to keep in mind if you're doing gluten-free and regular um, baking is you don't want to cross contaminate. So having um, measuring spoons and um, wooden spoons for stirring and measuring cups to be able to do both, you know, so that they're separate. Because um, if someone is needing gluten free and you're cross contaminating, you're they're gonna they're gonna be affected by that. So keep that in mind. Now here's outside of all of that. Here's some simple meals you can make that. Would, would, are, are really easy to do in the kitchen. You know, you've got your fresh produce. You can um, do stuffed peppers, stuffing the peppers with burger and some rice. The rice doesn't need to be cooked. The burger doesn't need to be cooked. Put that and season it. Put that in your pepper after you've like cut the top off and cleaned it out. Put that inside the pepper. Fill a couple peppers, put them in a pot. Put some tomato sauce on top. And, and in the pan and bake that in your oven for about 45 minutes at 350. You can also do it on your stove top if you have to. You can do it in the grill or in the sun oven. And that will give you a really delicious meal. You can add cheese on the top of that if you want while it's baking or when it comes out. Um, super quick, easy meal. You can also do the same with um, a tuna casserole. Um, so you could do that hot or cold and you know the other night I had I cut a zucchini in half I um, cleaned the center I put tuna on top of that and some uh, diced tomatoes and enjoyed a really good meal and I did that cold I also did um, another night same thing but I used poppy seed dressing on there and just had it ate it as is you could also bake that. So you could put your, um, do the same with your zucchini, put it in a pan with a little bit of water, put your um, tuna on top and cheese and diced tomatoes and bake that for a little while. And you'll have a really nice hot meal. Um, you could do the same with tomatoes, stuffed tomatoes. I love using summer, the summer produce, the fresh summer produce. There is nothing better than a fresh ripe tomato off the vine, in your garden, on your porch, from the neighbor's farm. That fresh produce is just amazing. Same with the fruits, you know, cantaloupe or watermelon. Enjoy what's available to you in the season. It's just, there's nothing better. If you have only ever lived off of grocery store produce, I encourage you to find a natural resource, a, a homegrown resource, or start growing it yourself. We really need to be well versed in all of these skills. The world is crazy, sideways, upside down, and getting worse daily. And you know, I am, the pe I am not the pessimist, I am the optimist, uh, but I am sharing that that's a reality. Our world is is not in a good way and having these skills is vital. I've already talked about that a couple episodes back, but I just wanted to touch on being able to create simple meals for the summer months. 
You know, you could also boil up some eggs. You could do this anytime, but boil up some eggs, make some egg salad, fresh lettuce, egg salad sandwich, egg salad salad. Uh, there's so many things that you can do to create simple picnic style dinners and lunches that just, I enjoy being able to enjoy the season's bounty and what the season has to offer. You know, in our fall months, I'm looking extremely forward to a fresh elk steak, you know, right off the elk. Being able to forage the things from the wild and being able to eat what is available at the time and, and during the season. So I just wanted to remind you guys to be creative. Um, you don't have to be stuck on the same meals. Some of you may deal with finicky eaters and that can be extremely difficult. Um, and maybe I should do a separate podcast on that because there are ways to get nutrients into those finicky eaters, but it does create a struggle because I don't know about you guys, but I don't run a restaurant. What I'm making for dinner is what I'm making for everybody. I'm very thankful to have um, very happy eaters. They'll eat anything. Um, the mountain boy with the exception of liver and heart and there's another one. There's one other thing he doesn't care for. Other than that, that boy will eat anything and I've been very fortunate that way. Um, but those things can be overcome too when you also pinpoint what it is that makes them as finicky as they are you know is it the texture is it the taste is it the consistency those type of things you know so for example if somebody doesn't like cauliflower as it is maybe if you mash it up um, and create mashed potato uh, cauliflowers you know it's basically what you are doing and uh, really tasty add some cheese add some butter um, another uh, common one is Brussels sprouts and in my opinion, the trick to Brussels sprouts is taking them and cutting them into fours and then baking them in like a cream of mushroom soup with some bacon. Can't go wrong. Bacon in everything. Maybe with the exception of ice cream, though I think there's even ice cream with bacon in it. But anyway, those are some tips, tricks, thoughts of mine for you for today. I hope this was helpful for some of you. I hope that you've enjoyed this time and the view and the nature uh, making itself known around me here. Get out and enjoy the season. Get out and enjoy your days and enjoy the food. You know, as I've shared many times before, my food is my healthcare system. I have chosen and, and have to because of my sensitivities and my body um, from my healing journey. I have to eat organic and non-GMO food or I don't eat at all. So I want to see you guys thriving. You know, in my faith-led healing side of things, I've been talking about toxicity. I'll, the majority of our toxicity comes from what we are putting in our bodies, whether it's our food or what we're putting on our bodies. Being aware of that and, and changing what we're eating can be life-changing and will also be your healthcare system because you won't need healthcare because you are getting so much healthier and are not being poisoned by our food. So do the best you can with what you got, where you are, eat well, enjoy the summer's bounty, and I will see you guys on the next episode. You guys take care and God bless. Thank you for joining us today on Mountain Women Radio, where you can learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and we encourage you to join us on faithledliving.com and faithledlearning.com. Be sure to connect with us on iTunes and leave a review. This will help us reach even more people. Until next time, keep learning, laughing, and living.